welcome to another episode of Sports and Discourse with your host, Derek Stevenson. Ladies and gentlemen, I am finally back from vacation. I had an amazing time and I missed some good Kentucky news while I was gone too. I was down in Myrtle Beach. I was hanging out with my wife and I was pretty sure that um, it was going to be some interesting things happening this week, uh, but I wasn't quite sure what it was going to be. I actually thought we would probably get like a commitment from Ugana Kingsley, but I was wrong about that. I think he's going to make it be uh, making his announcement soon, but I thought it was going to be Monday and it wasn't. But what we got instead was just in good, was just as good. Excuse me. We got Justin Edwards, right? And I've already spoke a little bit about Justin, but for anybody that may have not have seen the video that I did, I really, really like Justin's game. I kind of was uh, comparing him a little bit to Lamar Odom, if you will, because he, he kind of just favors him to me like a taller, slim, left-handed, kind of a real versatile type of player. He can handle the ball a little bit. He can shoot from outside. He can slash to the rim. He just kind of seems like he's going to be able to – uh contribute in many different ways I think he would be a really big versatile piece in this 2023 class which is seeming to be shaping up to be something special and for anybody that's not aware Reed Shepard put a lot of people on notice he uh he had a, a exhibition all-star game with his Midwest Ohio guys and they played against the strive for greatness AAU team with uh who you know mostly everybody knows them for Bronny James playing with them but they also had some other guys join the team another Kentucky uh, commit Rob Dillingham was also playing with Bronny but Reed Shepard stole the show and it was a it was a really heavy amount of talent in the game, and I was really um, excited. I was really encouraged to see Reed actually step up and shine the way he did because, you know, I had reported a, a little while back that he, when he was playing in the top 100 camp, he kind of started off a little slow, and then he kind of picked it up, and it just seems like he's had his foot on the gas ever since. He's he's not afraid to get busy with the guys with the, the bigger names and more clout. Like He's mixing it up. But the thing that I really love about him is what I said in my breakdown video of him. He just always seems to be under control, man. He never seems like he's doing too much. He never seems like he's trying to play um, – outside of his strengths he just takes the game and he just lets it come to him and he just figures out a way to fit himself in very nicely he plays extremely hard on defense he's very actually unselfish for a guy that can score he's a really unselfish ball player he's just really one of those team guys but you cannot sleep on him if you give him room, he definitely can fill it up from the outside. So, And that's one of the things that I really think is going to make him very valuable to this 2023 class because I don't really know um, what these guys are going to be able to shoot like when they get there. You know, we know what they can do off the dribble. We know Rob Dillingham can get hot, and sometimes he can go for big numbers. But lately... I've also seen him struggle from behind the arc a lot. So I ain't really 100% ready to say he's an excellent outside shooter. I think he's really streaky right now. And hopefully he can improve this next um, season coming up and he'll be better when he gets to Kentucky. And the same with uh, DJ Wagner. If we get DJ, he's kind of another one that's not really a great outside shooter. So hopefully he's going to be working on that too if he decides to come to Kentucky, which, like I said before, I'm pretty much feeling like DJ's a lock after i seen this Nike and Drake ad campaign. I'm counting DJ as a part of this class, right? So, But like I was saying, he needs to really work on his outside shooting. But like I said before, that's where Reed is really going to help this team. I think Reed is just going to be one of those guys that you can just – 
count on. He's just going to be dependable. He's not going to turn the ball over. He's going to make open shots. He's going to find the right man. He just seems like a a guy that's really polished um, beyond his years. And I think that he'll probably even get even better than that, you know, in this upcoming season. And by the time he gets to Kentucky, I think he's going to be actually a really good ball player. He has slipped in the rankings a little bit, but I think he's about to, uh, like I said, he put some people on notice this week. And I think he's going to be uh, rising back up in the ranks pretty soon. So I'm really excited for Reed, and I'm really happy. But like I said, he's trying to build the dream team, right? That's what he came out and said. He's building the dream team at Kentucky. He's already got Rob. He's already got Justin. Like I said, Justin is that real versatile key player that can play. uh, He could probably play anything from the point guard to the power forward position. He, of course, he would have to put on a little bit more strength. You know, he's not really a big dude. He's a slim, athletic guy. But like I said, he handles the ball good enough. He can play the point guard. He shoots good enough from the outside that he could play off the ball. And he definitely can play small forward, which is the position that I think he'll be starting at at Kentucky. But like I said, Reed, is a, he's already announced he's building the dream team. So, Reed, thank you for recruiting and building the dream team. I know I seen you um, talking to Bronny James a little bit after the game. You was talking to Rob Dillingham. I don't know if he's trying to recruit uh, Bronny as well. Who knows? But so far, things are looking really good. We got Rob. We got Reed. We going to have DJ. Keep our fingers uh, crossed on that one. We got Justin. Hopefully, we're going to have Ugana soon. And then maybe we add some more pieces to that. And, you know, I feel really good about what's happening at Kentucky. I feel like Coach Calipari is taking back over as, you know, the king of recruiting the top McDonald's All-American All-Star type of players. That's what he wants. He once had a stranglehold on that. Then Duke's. Uh, started to kind of take over a little bit but then coach K stepped down Roy Williams stepped down in North Carolina Jay Wright stepped down and Calipari has decided once again he is going to put that stranglehold back on the recruiting game now all we have to do is find that right bunch that can mesh and play with each other and learn and grow and hopefully Reed Shepard and Calipari and KT, and Chin, and everybody else, Orlando, they're going to build the dream team for 2023. I can't wait. But anyways, you let me know. What did you think about Reed's performance? Are you excited for him? Do you agree that he should build the dream team? Do you like Justin Edwards? I like Justin Edwards. You let me know what you think about him, and we'll get back at it next time on Sports and Discourse with Derek Stevenson.